And uh, we're on to the kind of second part of the program now. So really looking also what is big in the month of, of January is also the International Holocaust Memorial Day uh, that will take place this year on Friday, the 27th of January, which will mark the 78th anniversary of the uh, liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau, the uh, Nazi death camp uh, by the Red Army. Uh, how vital is it that we continue to mark this occasion? Uh, uh, and in your opinion, Jonathan, wh why is it still so important and so relevant? Um, it's incredibly relevant. Um, again, I've got some statistics um, from a conference called Claim Conference. It's a, a year ago now. But I think it's just so, so important. And this is about Britain. They had 2,000 people were surveyed. And 89% um, of the respondents have definitely heard of the Holocaust. But out of those 89%, um, those um, 52% did not know 6 million people were killed. Um, and only a quarter of them believed, 22% um, believed more than less than two million people were killed in the Holocaust. This is incredible because this is why we need Holocaust Memorial Day because we need to understand. It says nearly one third of UK respondents, 32 percent, were unable to name a single one of the 40,000 camps um, or ghettos in World War II. And a majority of UK respondents um, 56% believe something like the Holocaust could happen again. Hmm. Um, and there's another, uh, a couple of other statistics. There's one which is actually quite important as well. Um, out of those um, 2,000 people, a high percentage says that we need to educate our young people. Um, it, that historically we need to be talking in schools, um, making sure that the Holocaust is not forgotten. And having statistics like that, where people, even in this country, out of that percentage, people believe that it was only less than two million. They don't know the facts. They don't know about the kindergarten, uh, the train, the, the 10,000 Jews that came across. They, they have very, very little understanding, very little knowledge about the Holocaust Memorial um, situation. And, and so it's so, so important that we continue to re-educate uh, people in our nation. Uh, to the to what happened um, in the Holocaust in Germany and uh, the surrounding areas. So just even statistics like that are horrifying. That in our nation today, people do not recognise the Holocaust as we know it. And so education, education, education. I think a famous politician used to Tony say. Blow, yes. So it's important. No, well, thanks for bringing that to attention because it is so important that we can't afford to be apathetic Absolutely. or indifferent. Uh, and um, Len, you know, uh, when we look back at the horrific events of over 80 years ago, where the Nazis carried out the final solution against the Jewish people, which was the biggest crime of genocide in world history. Uh, again, we mentioned those numbers. We, we don't probably know the exact figure. It could even be more than six million uh, Jewish people that were murdered on industrial scale. But, but can you say why it's so important that Christians, together with the Jewish community, mark International Holocaust Memorial Day? Well, I think what Jonathan's just mentioned, I didn't know those figures. And it, it's, uh, it's remarkable that, uh, <clears throat> that we've lost so much ground. Uh, and we need to, to try and address that. And, and maybe that's something that we, as an organization, need to up our stakes on and uh, get more involved in. But you know, the, the, the Bible s speaks a lot about remembering. You know, the whole thing about Passover is, is it's remembering God's faithfulness. And even, you know, we as believers, when we have the Lord's Supper, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. And remembering is a, a very important part for, for us as believers. And remembering the Holocaust is something that we, we must really put in our diaries to do so. It's, it's, it's not a, something that, you know, a strange historical event that happened thousands of years ago. It happened in some people's lifetime, not, it was just before my lifetime, that six million plus, you know, a, a million children in, uh, you know, under the age of, uh, of, of 15 were, were, were slaughtered, for innocent children. And, and so, you know, we need to, to raise our, our, our game a bit to, to bring this to the knowledge of the church and the people in our country to see that, that this, because it will happen again. Somebody once said, if we forget history, we're, we're bound to repeat it. And so we've got to make sure that we, we 
keep this central in our uh, annual uh, remembrance events because it, it, it's still out there, it's still happening. And uh, it, it's, it, uh, the, the, those facts, Jonathan, are just horrifying. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and Jonathan, thank you for sharing those, those statistics. But aren't we also in great uh, danger of losing the impact of, uh, of the Holocaust, uh, particularly International Holocaust Memorial Day, as those Holocaust survivors uh, are getting older and older? They're not going to be around for much longer. Uh, and, and therefore, there will no longer be any uh, first hand accounts of what happened. Um, and that puts us in a very, very dangerous position. Um, how important is it that we educate the next generation um, uh, regarding the horrors that took place in the Holocaust and, and continue uh, 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 as Christians to warn of the dangers of what happens when anti-Semitism gets out of control? Yeah, it's so, so important to get this information to as many schools as possible. And I know that um, Holocaust survivors, even to this day, in their 80s, even in the 90s, are going into schools and they are incredibly uh, well received um, um, 99 times percent of the time. And people are, and young children and, and teenagers are thrilled uh, to hear the first hand accounts. I know that uh, those people who um, are concerned, they are recording a lot of, of the testimonies now um, so that there is um, some sort of um, remembrance um, of the Holocaust from first hand. Um, so lots and lots of recordings are taking place, interviews are taking place, so that we have um, a whole library of information that we can pass out to schools um, in the future because it is something that we have to, we have to educate our young people about this. Absolutely. And, and and uh, Len, it, it's extraordinary, isn't it, that uh, we have uh, presidents, we have prime ministers, we have ministers of state, we, we have members of parliament, we have church leaders and Jewish leaders mark International Holocaust Memorial Day. Uh, we have the mainstream media showing films, uh, documentaries, uh, interviews with Holocaust survivors. We see interviews with Holocaust survivors in our, our kind of national newspapers. Um, and yet what we're seeing at the same time is, is a massive rise of, of Jew hatred around the world. And it's, it's gone mainstream. If, if we you know, just show one example of the, uh, the music artist, Kanye West with his social media posts with millions of followers uh, shows that there is a discrepancy between Holocaust education and marking this and a huge rise of, of, of Jew hatred that we're seeing uh, in Britain, in Europe and, and in the United States and around the world. It's a very sad fact that anti-Semitism is rising you know, in, in particularly in the Western world and, and in the USA, you know, North America. Uh, I was watching some video recently of, uh, of one guy just being a total Holocaust, survivor, uh, Holocaust denier and, um, and, and really th this hatred was, was pouring out of him and I, I was shocked. Uh, but you know the, the, the problem is Simon that you know we, we as believers we believe the Bible and we believe in a spiritual dimension to life and this, this spiritual dimension is, is most obvious when it comes to hatred of the Jews because it doesn't go away with education, it doesn't go away with, with uh, you know, Western development. There is a spiritual force operating and has been operating for thousands of years. You know, the same thing that happened uh, in, in the, the 1930s and 40s, you know, it was actually happening back in the Bible times when we read about the story of Haman uh, and, and um, uh, and you know, just an, an Esther and that whole story of, of God re saving his people, this hatred of the Jewish people has been there all through the last thousands of years. It was in the early church, the early church, if you read church history, it's something that well, I'm quite ashamed of. So it's the same thing that's happening today that we're seeing a rise, of, and, and of course we as believers, we need to speak up and pray up. We need, to, we need to, to get before the Lord and, and pray for God's mercy upon the Jewish people and for, for the church to come awake, uh, to, to, uh, to awaken to this whole uh, responsibility that we have to pray for Israel and the Jewish people and to stand with them. Absolutely. I just want to add a little bit more to that. I mean, if we take, for example, the story of Moses, I think in um, Exodus 1, it talks about how a new Pharaoh uh, came to the throne and he didn't remember Joseph and what Joseph had done 
which led him to uh, mistrust the Jewish people that were living in the land of Egypt and then enslaved them and showed them a kind of bondage and God raised up Moses to liberate the Jewish people into the homeland. So I think that's also a biblical case for understanding of what happens when we, the consequences of forgetting history. Um, ICJ uh, put together this uh, excellent uh, five minute interview uh, with a Holocaust survivor so that we know of the ho true horrors that took place and the first hand accounts. Let's have a look. Nine a few days uh, uh, after the war broke out, the Germans were in already. And they came to my to the backyard where I used to live, and with the boots, you know, and we got scared already. It was uh, a deadline till nine o'clock at evening. The Jews were allowed to go out. After nine, who will go out will be shot. My name is Leokadia Schlag. I am 87 years old. I was born in Poland, in Częstochowa. In 1939, when the war broke out, I lived still with my parents. 1942, I was uh, uh, sent to Auschwitz-Birkenau. First, they took my mother. There was a stadion in the through all the Jews on the stadion in the select. The weakest go left, the the, the more the stronger go right. You know, and my mother was the first that they took her, and I don't know till today where she ended up. And when I was in Birkenau already, uh, I was uh, told that my, uh, they took my father and my sister, she was older than me, she went voluntarily. And my brother, uh, I was told in Birkenau from uh, men's, was the men's were separated from the women's. So the men told me, a, a gentleman told me that my brother was in Gross Rosen, was also a concentration camp. And I don't know till today, I have no grave, no nothing. Once a year, in the warm spring sunshine, life in Israel comes to a complete stop. For one minute, Israelis around the country stop to remember the tragic death of over six million Jews during the Holocaust. Yom HaShoah is Israel's national day for Holocaust remembrance. And uh, when, the, when the war uh, uh, finished, when I was liberated in Dachau, the 28th of April, 1945, I was staying like a skelet without family, without nobody. I didn't have a place where to go. When, when I was liberated, I didn't think, where is my parents? Where are my, my siblings? I, I said, I want to eat. I was hungry. And this is today, it's, it, you know, I, I can't forgive myself that I didn't have in my mind, my parents, only food. And this is a very tragic, this is a, a tragedy. I, 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 when I was in Montreal, I paid 4,000 Canadian dollars to be transferred to Israel in case I die because I don't want to be buried in, in Canada. Because of my children, they are not millionaires, they, are, uh, they were hardworking people, and I couldn't live to them uh, uh, to, to come every year to visit my grave, because it's 15 hours flight. So, and secondly, my heart lies here, because I was suffering. Uh, for five, oh, 63 months in concentration camps that we have a country today. And the sentiments, you know, you can take away the sentiments. Uh, uh, six million Jews perished, yeah, but we have a country today. And you know, sir, if we forget to speak from our past, 
we are doomed to repeat it. Today, there are still thousands of Holocaust survivors who are in a sense forgotten and living below the poverty line in Israel. Help us to support these precious survivors while we still can. And uh, so, so important to uh, get the testimonies of Holocaust survivors on record so that when future generations ask what happened uh, during the Holocaust, they'll have that first-hand account of what actually happened, which is imperative that uh, we record as many videos as we can. So ICJ UK have done a, a wonderful job there. Um, Len, uh, before we talk a little bit more about the Holocaust, I think we also need to, to recognise the, uh, the dire situation facing the Jewish community, for example, in the Ukraine, uh, when, uh, you know, when Russia decided to invade that nation in February of 2022, it took people by surprise. 